and welcome to Landscaping Southwest Television. I'm Karma Harvey. We're here to show you how you can transform your property into a beautiful oasis of outdoor living. temperature changes, the abundant sunshine, and limited rainfall. Therefore, landscaping can be challenging in this area than other wetter regions in the United States. So on this show, we will be talking with experts who are successfully landscaping the Southwest. We want to help you create that beautiful space you've been dreaming about. Join us today on Landscaping Southwest. to another episode of Landscaping Southwest Television. I'm Karma Harvey and I'm standing here with our returning guest, Sam Lopez, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about his farm and your background. Yeah, so we've been on the show a few times before. Um, so here at our urban farm, we do um, composting. I'm a certified master composter. We have chickens. We uh, grow fruits, vegetables, and herbs, um, fruit trees, grapes. Um, we're starting right now with a lot of uh, indoor uh, plants. We've got lettuces and tomatoes, um, eggplant, a lot of things that are getting ready to go outdoors pretty soon. And can you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, we got into this uh, a few years back, um, just trying to, to get uh, healthy with our eating habits. Um, and that kind of took off with um, kind of the, the, the chickens and eggs, you know, fresh eggs. Okay. Um, and, and doing the the fruits and vegetables and chickens and composting it just became this very um kind of a sustainable you know farming effort right right so it, it all works together um and one of the last things that we added to what we do here and, and it goes right in line with pollinators and uh helping with uh our, our honeybees as we we added bees honeybees a few years back also and can you tell us a little about your farm and the name of your this is a business, of course, right? Well, it, it's, um, it's a very, uh, it's kind of a family effort right now, but okay. we do share our eggs. We sell them from time to time. We, we love to give our, our plants away. Um, a lot of folks will, will when I give teaching uh, sessions mm -hmm. for composting, I give uh, compost away and just try to help people. So right now, we're really just um, at Seven Heavenly Hands Garden. Uh -huh. It's really a, an outreach to folks. It's not so much a business, but there are plans for a business down the road. Awesome. And just looking around at your farm, you would consider this a farm, right? It is. It's an urban farm. It's a, a lot of, you know, you can hear people say hobby farm. Okay. But um, again, I, I consider, and I think the state of New Mexico does consider honeybees as livestock. Okay. And chickens, I think, uh, qualify for that term as well. So, um, you know, we grow fruits okay. and vegetables, sure. and um, I think it all works together to... And we'll get to see some of the... Yeah, the, we're going to go outside here in just a bit and take a awesome. look around. Awesome. So we're excited to be here and we're going to have so much in store for this episode today. So come back and join us. Southwest Television. Sam Lopez, why don't you go ahead and tell us about the, the Italian bees? Yeah, we, we uh, received this package of bees this morning. Um, we purchased these about uh, a few months ago okay. and they've made a journey from California all the way to Albuquerque in a, in a few days or so. And uh, so we're going to be installing them in our Warre Hive. Awesome. 
Nice. And can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here in terms of what are they doing? So right now what we have in this small box is about 10 to 15,000 honeybees. Wow. We have one queen okay. and a lot of worker bees, which are female bees, and we have a handful of drones, which are male bees. Male bees. Okay. And uh, they have a can of syrup, sugar water, okay. that they've uh, been given to help keep them nourished while they make the trip. And again, we're going to install these into our um, hive today and get busy with beekeeping again. Nice. And how long have you been doing this beekeeping? With, this will be our third season. We had um, a cutout of bees, which means that uh, these, our first bees were taken from a structure. Okay. Uh, they were cut out. Um, they were installed in a, in a hive. And we had them for about two and a half seasons. Wow. And we got to experience honey. Okay. We got to um, help out with pollinating uh, neighbors' uh, fruit trees and flowers. Um, and so that's the real benefit of, of honeybees to the community and the environment, is that they pollinate uh -huh. and they provide honey. Um, they're a, a great benefit to um, all the plants that are around us, really. Okay. And you were mentioning about the, earlier that the queen bee is a, maybe right around in this area, is that right? Right, the queen is in a cage right now. Okay. And what we'll do when we install uh, the package of bees is we're going to take her out and place her in the hive. Okay. And then we'll dump the bees in the bo into the boxes. And actually we're not gonna dump, we're gonna place them in there. We're gonna do a, a gentler, kinder installation today. Okay. And basically, um, she'll stay in that cage for about a week. They, they've got to have some time to get to know her, okay. uh, get to recognize her pheromone and identify with her. And once sure. that happens, they'll be bonded for as long as they're um, able to survive together. That's awesome. Yeah, it's that gonna... Just, I'm excited about it. And so they are... We're gonna be looking at something similar to this, right? This is our first Waray hive, and this is the yellow one hive. It was our first hive. Nice. Uh, I'm into colors, so yellow was the first color. The hive will, that these mm -hmm. bees will go into is uh, blue two. Blue two. Blue okay. two. Um, real simple, basic, and basically it's a vertical hive uh, that mimics nature. It's a very natural, holistic hive for for backyard hobbyists. It's not a real uh, intensive um, honey producing hive like okay. others, but it's a very, again, simple, straightforward, hands-free type of hive. Nice, nice. And can you tell us like the seasons for the bees? Sure, yeah. The, so the seasons, again, they, they hibernate in the winter. Okay. Uh, and that doesn't mean that they necessarily sleep, but they slow down they cluster around the queen in the hive. Okay. Um, they don't go out really at all except to maybe um, relieve themselves and to get a little bit of air. But in the spring when, when uh, plants are blooming and flowers are blooming, they start to become active. And once the, uh, a nectar flow starts to happen, which is when plants are really starting to produce nectar, sure. uh, pollen, that's when they'll become real active. The queen will start to lay more and more eggs. Okay. She lays in the winter but not as much and they'll just start to expand and start to grow. I mean, they're, a, they're an organism based on, you know, a hive that's very strong can have up to 30, 35,000 bees in it. And wow. so as the um, season progresses, they'll become stronger and become more active. And so, you know, and then as fall comes around, that's when you're going to harvest honey. Okay. And so uh, that's kind of the, the sequence and, and, and progression of, of a colony throughout the season. The yellow one here, can you tell me about the certain levels that I'm looking at here? Yeah, so what the hive has basically on top is a roof, and what that roof does is it helps to protect all of the boxes that are below from weather, from okay. rain and snow. Uh, sure. There's opening the openings in it to help stabilize if there's high winds, the winds can pass through. Nice. But each box below it are the same. And again, with the Warray hive, it's, it's, it's kind of also known as the people's hive. It's a very simple hive to make. So each box has eight uh, combs of honey, combs oh, of, of okay. wax, honey, nice. pollen, and they build down um, okay. as they're progressing. And on the bottom is their landing board. So they're going to come in and out from that landing board. Oh. And again, um, again, the... the um, the warmth and, and heat that are generated is all kept in there. There's a quilt box at the top 
that helps to, again, um, regulate temperature. And um, so it's all contained in a series of boxes. And as the colony grows, we'll actually add boxes to the hive. Thank you, Sam. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You can take off your sweater. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting into my Heisenberg <laughs> outfit. It might be a little, but yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe after. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let me just, let me just put it and then this, yeah, this gets flipped onto your head. Flick. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> nice. Ta-da! We have to get my um head. You have to get your head in there. All the way in. There you go. And then they tuck in. Oh, did you get some hair? Yeah. All that hair. Yeah, Sam and I generally help each other into our outfits so that make sure there's no... There you go. Okay, so how do I look? Do I look avant-garde? <laughs> So again, here, this is the roof. So again, the roof, um, you know, again, helps to protect the, the hive itself from weather. Again, so it sheds water, um, sheds snow, sleet, whatever could be out here. Uh, and then there's openings that help again stabilize it if there's high wind so it doesn't blow off. So that roof is easily separated. So the next is what's called the quilt. So this quilt is filled with, um, you know, wood shavings. It could be filled with pine needles, any kind of insulating natural material. And this again helps to keep the, the hive's temperature, um, the humidity level yeah. kind of constant. Now this is what's called a uh, yes, propolis screen. That quilt, the bottom, is an organic material, and so we don't want the bees um, necessarily biting through that and letting all that material fall. So this is a screen that helps to prevent that. This also then allows the bees to put propolis on here to help regulate temperature and humidity. And propolis is like a cement-like material that's natural that they produce, okay. and they can regulate how much air and ventilation is let up through um, how much propolis they put here. They control it. Oh, wow. that. Sure, sure. So this box again here, this is just for the installation. This won't okay. stay, but we're going to use it. Okay. Yeah, hold that one. The propolis is sticky. <laughs> so yeah. there's that box. Now these are the boxes oh, wow. that are part of the actual sure. Warre hive. So the frames sit there. This is where we're going to install the queen when we let her um, into it. Oh, okay. So what is is Warre, what does that mean? Warre is, um, that was the name of the French abbey. He was a French priest okay. that kind of came up with this. Sure. He did a lot of research. He was a beekeeper from okay. France. And so again, the people's hive or the Warre hive, very straightforward, very simple. Sure. These are the boxes on the interior. They're 30 centimeters square. Okay. Um, about 18 centimeters high. And he felt that that was the ideal dimension that mimicked how bees live in tree trunks. So do you try to separate the queen and put her the in The queen there is gonna be in her cage. She has okay. to We're gonna put her right she's through in a here. Cage. Inside yeah. here, she's yeah. in a cage. Oh, yeah. oh I see, I see. I back. thought she was just kinda of hanging out up there. Now here's yeah. one thing for our hive that we have a head start on that other hives may not. Okay. And that is, we have comb that other bees have drawn for us. Oh, nice. Empty comb that they So have. this is comb that they're gonna be able to start laying eggs. They're gonna to start to be able to put in nectar, um, pollen. And so those will be ready for them um, to start using. Very cool. And how long does it normally take for them to actually build a comb? It could take, you know, to get something 
Where's um, the real Yeah, I'll, I'll show her that here in a second, but yeah. there's a pretty nicely drawn complete comb. Oh, okay. But here's, let me show you, we have one that's actually what they call a teardrop shape, okay. and this is what a, a very, very young piece of comb, comb looks, looks like. like. Okay. So that's the classic teardrop. Ah, nice. But you can see how clear right. and white virgin and virgin kind of, yeah, yeah, virgin comb. Now this is again how comb is started. So okay. this is what's called a starter strip. Sure. And it's coated with honey. Okay. I'm sorry. Wax. Coated with wax. wax. Okay. And what that wax coating does is it helps to show them, hey, this is where we could start to draw our own comb. Sure. And you see what, you know, what they right, draw. Right, 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 what they... So all of, the, all of these frames that you see the comb, this is what it started like. Wow. So how, what type, how many hives are out there besides... I mean, three. Three, okay. Uh, Langstroth, Langstroth, which are internationally known, very good and efficient and productive for making honey. Uh, top bars, okay. which are horizontal hives. Okay. And then the Ware, the which are very unknown. Wow. Yeah. Still relatively new here, yeah. This oh, is set up yeah. for so cool. for winter. On this side, like it is so cool. It's a, like a glass. Is that glass uh -huh. or is it plexi? Plexi. plexi glass. Okay. So yeah, you can you can monitor what's going on somewhat, not one hundred percent, without getting in and disturbing them. Kind of sure. cool for kids to come and see. Oh yeah. Nice. Let's do this. So we're gonna gently but firmly Give this a nice bang so that the bees fall off and they're not clustered all around her and they get away from this opening, okay? Okay. Just like that. Does that aggravate them? Um, well, they're getting kind of, kind of loud. They're kind yeah. of, they, a little, they, they probably are just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, but. They're like, whoa, what happened there? Yeah. Huh. Heavy with, with, yeah. And this is where they come out, right? Mm-hmm. She's good. And she is in there. Now it's got a plug in it, so we keep the plug in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
back. We have just installed our Italian package bees. And uh, what, what type of, uh, I would say, upkeep goes into beekeeping in, in terms of like if you have a pet that's a dog, cat, do you have to give that much attention to the bees? And there, there's, uh, there's really minor maintenance and upkeep, upkeep to backyard bees. Okay. Um, with our bees, again, an installation like we just did right now, that's a pretty intense one-time event, you know, for maybe five years. But uh, through the cycle of a season, there's a spring inspection when you want to add a box. Okay. Um, you may want to be checking your bees maybe once a month for okay. any kind of um, pests, just to see the health, make sure that the queen is laying eggs. All right. Um, but really, other than that, they're very, they're very maintenance free. Again, make sure you have a water source for them nearby. Okay. Um, they're going to have a five mile radius from the hive. Okay. Collecting honey, or sure. collecting nectar and collecting pollen. Sure. But uh, other than that, they're very hands off. So definitely you don't want the bees going into swimming pools or? Right, yeah, if you have neighbors with pools and you don't provide water, they're gonna be in your neighbor's pool and that could, again, pose some problems. But like I say, nine times out of 10, folks don't even know, for instance, my, my small apiary here mm -hmm. with our one hive, folks don't even know that they're here right. until I share the sure. honey with them. Um, and when you order new, or not new bees, but when you get your box of bees again, would it be the same Italian? You can order different types of bees. There's Carnolian, there are Italian, uh, there's actually a, a kind of a, a little bit more active, maybe aggressive Russian type bee, but uh, for the most part, backyard hobbyists go with Italian bees. They're very docile, very gentle. Okay. Um, they were. They, they are, were. They and, were. and you got to experience that. And uh, I know it's one thing to say that they're they're going to be like that, but to experience it for the first time, you and uh, the producer of our show here did extremely well. I was pretty, right. I mean, proud Good. of you both. I was very excited, and for you to let me take part of it, I'm just, it's like a Friday, like, ah. Well, here's the thing now. So now you get to become an ambassador for the honeybee. You get to talk about how that experience was. I'm sure folks that are going to see the show will come away hopefully with a better understanding of how important honeybees are right. as pollinators and as um, insects that are around us every day. Okay. Thank you, Sam. And thank you viewers for watching Landscaping Southwest Television. I'm Karma Harvey. Join us next time as we help you transform your property into a beautiful oasis of outdoor living. Goodbye. Um, and can you tell our viewers, our viewers, <laughs> sorry. Let's try that again. Yeah.